Hey ho there sailors and welcome back to another episode of Sailing Embla World! On today's episode we're gonna have ourselves a cookout. Oh just kidding, I'm just making some breakfast. As you can see here, we have some we have ourselves some bacon and we'll throw in a couple of eggs in there as well. That's to have the eggs and the bacon for breakfast. That's real man's breakfast. Now this for breakfast, huh? <laughs> it's gonna be nice. Now, we only need some coffee and we're good to go. I was just kidding, of course. I was thinking that since I've survived my first winter here on the boat, I'm an expert about living on board boats, especially at high latitudes. So I was thinking uh, I was going to give you my two cents about how it is to live on a boat. So if you are thinking about buying yourself a boat and moving into it, this is the video for you. This here is my five uh, cons and my five pros about living on a boat. Before we get started on the list, I need to put in a disclaimer. The points of view on the list are just that, points of view, and may or may not reflect the points of view of other liverboards, nor should they. Questions like, what kind of boat should I get, or what size of boat do I need, uh, will not be answered <laughs> in this list, I can tell you, because I think there are as many answers to that question uh, as there are liverboards, or almost. If uh, somebody that lives aboard a, I don't know, 60 foot yacht or something that watches this channel, they may or may not think I am quite out of my mind to live aboard such a tiny vessel and without any shower or creature comforts. Uh, and I would also think that about people that lives aboard 20 foot boat but i'm sure there are people that does just that so the answer to those questions are really up to you because what is a point of view really isn't it just experiences filtered through your personality that's kind of deep i gotta write that down before i forget it over to the list <laughs> I'm gonna start this off by going through the five things that are bad about living on a boat, especially up here in the high latitudes. Number five. Space. Or lack thereof. Cause no matter how big your boat is, it's always gonna be cramped inside of the boat. Well, I guess if you have a 60 footer, that would be good. But <laughs> unless you don't, it's always gonna be cramped and small. I moved down to my boat from my apartment and I got rid of everything <laughs> I owned except for the things that I thought I uh, needed and uh, well <laughs> now six months later I've gotten rid of a ton more stuff because it isn't enough room on a boat. It is cramped and it's tiny and on that note you guys that live in a tiny house, well, I wouldn't call those tiny. I would call those castles. Because you guys, you have showers, you have a big kitchen, you have a bed, and you have everything you need in there. So that, that's, a, that's a mansion. <laughs> you haven't seen a tiny house until you tried living on a boat. Another bad thing about being such a tiny place uh, you always have to think about what you're buying. If you need a new pair of pants, you really have to ask yourself, do I need it? Where do I put it? And sometimes if you're gonna buy something new, you have to get rid of something old <laughs> because there aren't any place to put it. Number four. <coughs> Leakeroo. Now the next thing on the list is of course leakage. And the strange thing about that, there's no logic to where it's leaking. I've had leakage in the galley, I've had leakage in the, in the nav station and on the toilet. 
and uh, well I can't find out where it's leaking from and just as soon as it uh, starts leaking it just stops and I think many people that lives on board boats have had the same issues and usually it, it it's like a leakage and after a, a month maybe two I find out where it's leaking from it's usually somewhere on deck is a loose screw or some uh, silicon or something that's not working properly anymore so it's leaking in just a little bit at a time and when it have uh, have uh, accumulated enough water and it just pours through here for instance I've had leakage coming from up here and it just started to dribble down here at the sink and it, you can see there's some tape residue I just used some tape uh, to tape up here so that the water would uh, pour down into the sink instead of uh, behind the cabinet there um, I'm thinking, I am suspecting the culprit to be this window here that it's leaking from uh, somewhere in the frame or something. That's the only possible conclusion, I think. So it's not easy to find the leakage, but that's a thing that I've uh, had during the winter and it really, really bugs me. Number three. Cold floors. Ugh. Cold floors. When I'm talking about cold floors, I'm talking freezing, freezing cold. Uh, during the winter here, when it was at its coldest, it actually hurt my feet just to stand there in the galley making food. Uh, so I had to keep my feet up at all times. <laughs> Uh, I know what you're thinking. Well, at least some of you are thinking, why don't you just get some carpets in here? Well, when it was at its coldest, I didn't have a penny to my name. I was flat out broke. So I couldn't buy pretty much anything other than uh, food. I uh, solved the problem by having extra socks. That would at least make it bearable. And uh, another thing, I don't know really if I want to have carpets on the floor because I really like these wooden floors here. It's very boaty, if you will. So I think I will invest in a pair of fluffy slippers for next winter. Number two, smell. And now we are down to the second to last uh, point on my list. The last two points are actually connected to one another. And this point is of course smell. <sighs> oh yeah. No, I'm not talking about body odor. I'm talking about the climate on board. Because it is kind of damp and it gets kind of smelly. Especially when I've left the boat for some hours and I've run uh, the heater through the electrical system and not the diesel heater. It gets kind of smelly, kind of reeky, I, I would say. When I open the hatch there and I go down, it's... Mm. Number one. Damp and moist. Now we are down to the very last item on uh, this bad list or what is not good about living on board a boat and that is damp the environment on, on board gets very damp everything gets kind of moist your clothes get moist and uh, it is not because you are living on water it's because you are living on board because the whole boat is kind of sealed <laughs> during the winter uh, and it wouldn't be a problem if you're living in a warm climate on board a boat. You could just uh, ventilate the boat, having the hatches open. But you can't really do that during the winter when it's 10 below zero or something. I'm talking about Celsius, of course. It gets quite cold if you do that, but you have to do it sometimes. But anyway, everything you do on board a boat creates water uh, vapor. And uh, cooking, making coffee, and yeah, just breathing creates this. And that water has to go somewhere. 
and it can't really go out because you don't ventilate so when it hits the cold outer walls it turns into solid again your and clothes will suck it up and your books and paper will suck it up and this hair is of course connected with a prior topic i had uh, about the smell because that is what creates the smell uh, if i heat the boat with the diesel heater it gets much drier inside if i use the electrical one it doesn't dry up the boat now there are things you could do to remedy the problem and one of them is uh, having a dehumidifier on board but that sucks up a lot of juice and it isn't really cheap either but it's a it's a good thing to have and i'm probably going to get one sooner or later this here is the diesel heater and I'm running it right now. I don't know if you can see. Yes, you can see it burning down there and it's quite hot. And down here I have the electrical one. As you can see in there, this is my electrical heater. And this bad boy works by heating up the water that circulates throughout the boat through these vents here. And uh, the same thing for the diesel heater, but it also heats up the air that comes up here. So it's nice toasty. So this works fine when I'm at work, but it doesn't counteract the, the smell as this does. Here in the galley, at this cupboard here, I can show you, you see here, that's water or that's condensation as you can see there on the rubber there that's all condensation from the hot uh, indoor air condensating on the hull which is very cold uh, welcome back to Tonanger on this b slightly gray day with uh, occasional rain shower now and then but at least it ain't cold well we have run through our list of five things that are bad or the cons about living on a boat here in the high latitudes and those things were of course space leakage icy cold floors the smell and of course last but not least condensation and i think that the condensation bit that is the bad thing and uh, i really need to do some more insulating on embla here during the summer and uh, hopefully it will be better but we have a couple of honorable mentions about bad things living aboard a boat like this thing your veggies <laughs> will go bad really fast and no hot water say hello to my hot water heater and last but not least the tiny fridge of embla it's tiny but it's small <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding. Now, since I don't want to have uh, lengthy videos, I'm going to upload this today. And next week, we're going to go through the good things about living on a boat, which I don't think it's going to be a problem because uh, the pros still outweighs the cons in my book anyway. And I guess that concludes this week's episode. And thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and help me grow this channel and don't forget about this one that also helps write me a comment in the comment sections below and i will answer them all i probably have gotten a couple of things wrong so give me your two cents about how it is to live on a boat or how you may think it is so take care and i'll see you there <laughs> We have a couple of honorable, but we have a couple of, but we have a couple of, couple of.